In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Shape Extrude node. So let's start by creating the node. I'll hit the space bar, and I'm going to do a search here for Shape, and you'll see we have this new Shape Extrude. So I'll left click here to create an instance of this node. Now the Shape Extrude is going to render a shape here in my 2D view, and you can see that, uh, well, we have a shape and we have a little position controller here. And as I move this around, it's going to allow me to orient the shape here in my 2D view. Now we have some parameters here for controlling things like our extrude height as well as the extrude depth. And here we have the extrude shape. So by default, you can use a base cylinder or a cube. And then we also have this custom input here. So I'm going to set this to custom input to start. And over here I have just a shape that I created. And you notice that this is just a binary black and white shape. And I'm going to plug this right into the input here for the shape extrude. So I'll double click. And now here's the result. You can see that we're using my custom shape pattern here for the extrude shape. Now again, I can do things like uh, play around with my extrude depth as well as the overall scale. And then here in this section of sliders, we have uh, the ability to control things like the bevel height as well as the bevel intensity as well as the bevel curve. So here I can make changes to that curve. I can round out my bevel shape or I can move it in to produce more of an inward curve like this. There's also a setting here for mirror bevel. So if I enable this to true, you can see that we're just going to mirror or repeat that bevel on the other side of the shape. I'm gonna set that back to false here for now. So here you'll notice that we have this drop down for profile type and there are three options. We have straight, vertical gradient, and mask. And if we look at vertical gradient and mask, these options are going to allow us to create a custom profile we can use for the bevel. So for example, let's set this to vertical gradient and take a look at how we can use a gradient to create our profile. So here I'll hit the space bar and I'm going to just create first a linear gradient. And with this guy selected, I am going to add a curve node to this as well. And let's take the result of this curve here and plug that into our profile gradient. So again, we'll double click so we can see our shape extrude and this is what we're getting. So now let's go back here to our curve and we can edit the curve to create that custom profile. So I'm just going to uh, left click in here to start to create some keys and then just start to kind of play around here with the curve. And you can see that I'm able to adjust these curves again to create that custom profile. So then here we might go back here to the shape extrude and just look around and play around here with our extrude height and our depth and so on. And then again, like I said, we're just going to mess around here to create a custom profile that we want to use for our shape. Okay, so here I'm just going to use that curve here. And then I can also, again, like I said, come in and I can play around still with my bevel height as well as my bevel intensity value and also make adjustments here to that bevel curve. Again, the profile that I'm creating here with the curve node is just allowing me to create that custom profile that I wanna work with. Now, there's also another option here, and if we take a look underneath profile type, you'll see that we have mask. So when I enable mask, you can see that we have this profile mask input, and this is going to allow us to input a shape that we can use for this profile. So what I'm going to do for in this case is I'm going to create uh, here just an SVG node. I'll do this from, from resource, and we'll call this mask. And I'm going to set this to be grayscale. So here I'm going to use the pen tool, and I'm just going to create uh, a shape that I'm going to, that's going to represent this custom profile. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you create this shape here on the right side. So again, I have uh, just going to plot a few keys in here to just create a basic profile shape. So we'll just do something like this. Okay, so here I have a shape that I can work with. Let's take the output of this shape and plug it into the profile mask. And now let's take a look at our shape extrude. And here you can see this is the shape that we're getting. So again, going back to shape extrude, I have the ability to, to keep messing around with uh, all of my settings again. Uh, as, I, as I work through building up what this uh, shape is going to be. So here in this case, I'm going to set my profile mask back to my vertical gradient. And I think what I'll do is uh, I'll just enable my uh, bevel mirror, and this is going to represent the shape, let's say, that I want to create. So now, uh, one of the things that I want to bring your attention to is this output range, and there is some settings here from 0 to 1 or negative 1 to 1. When the output range is set to 0, 1, it outputs a 16-bit image where the center of the shape has a 0.5 gray value. 
If we then set this to negative one to one, we output a 32-bit float image where the center of the shape is black and the parts of the shape under the middle value have negative values. This allows you to have positive negative values for the shape. A good use for this setting is when you want to use your shape with the new shape splatter node. With the negative one to one range, the middle of the shape will sit right on the surface of the background height. So here I have an example where I'm taking the shape and running that here through the shape splatter. You'll notice here with the shape extrude, my output range is set to negative one to one. And so my shape, again, you can see that that center value uh, here, let's double click to view this. So here you can see that middle of the shape is sitting right on the surface here of the background height that I'm feeding into my shape splatter, which is just this Perlin noise. Now here, if I take my shape extrude and I set the output range back to zero to one, you can see the difference that we're gonna get. So again, it just kind of pushes the shape upwards like this. So if you want to be able to have negative values, you're going to use this negative one to one option here. And this is probably what you wanna use when you're working with the shape splatter. Here, going back to shape splatter, uh, we'll scroll down here to where I have my height. And if I look at my height offset, I can start to use this to push this down here into the surface. So here in this case, I'm gonna set this back here to zero to one for this demonstration. And the next thing I wanna talk about here is what this downscale multiplier is going to do. So we have a bit of a limitation in this uh, shape extrude node. So for example, if I wanna create a normal map out of this, so I'm gonna take my output and plug this into normal, and then I'm gonna set this uh, value up to something like say 64. And if we take a look, you can see that we're getting a lot of artifacting here in the normal map. So one of the ways that you can alleviate this is by uh, working with this uh, downscale multiplier. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select my shape and I'm gonna come back up here to my base parameters and I'm gonna set this output size to absolute and I'm gonna set this to uh, a value like 2048 by 2048 here. And uh, then what I'm gonna do, like I said, is I'm gonna come back here in the shape extrude. I'll scroll down and I'm gonna come down to this downscale multiplier and I'm gonna start to increase this value here. And here, we'll set this all the way to two. So now uh, that we've done this, if I come back over here to my normal and I zoom in, you can see that uh, this kind of technique that I'm showing here does help to clean up uh, the result that you're getting from this normal map. Now, it's not perfect. If I zoom in, of course, we can still see we have some artifact and some issues here. But you can see that we were able to clean this up uh, somewhat and get a, a bit better of a result. And typically what you're gonna to wanna to do uh, with this type of shape extrude is you're going to wanna to use this, let's say like in the shape splatter or something like that as well. So going through the process of using this downscale multiplier in most cases is going, to, is going to work okay and these artifacts aren't going to be too big of an issue. So now again, I can come back here to my shape extrude and I can work with my position here and I can start to you know, position this or orient this shape however I need to produce the effect or result that I'm looking for. So that's going to uh, close out this video on how to use the shape extrude. The shape extrude allows us to take a binary shape like this, uh, extrude a shape out of it. Uh, it gives us full control over things like uh, the extrude and the bevel, the extrude height, depth, the bevel. We can also use the profile type as we've shown here to create uh, custom profiles, either through a gradient or something like the SVG node as I've shown here. And then finally we can output this here to let's say something like a normal map. But if you're going to use the normal, just know that we do have a limitation where it's gonna create some artifacting. So you'll want to uh, come in here and use this downscale multiplier. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.